So here's where things begin for real. I want to welcome people to the course and I want to welcome people to the first series of lectures, which is on the brain on neuroscience. And I want to begin the series of lectures and the course itself with a story about a man named Phineas Gage and an event that happened to Gage in summer of 1848 in Cavendish, Vermont. So Gage was a blessed informant working on a railway construction project and his job at the time uh, was to clear away rock uh, so that they could lay down tracks and to do so his routine during those days was uh, that he would bore a hole in the rocks. Inside the hole he put blasting powder and a fusing. Then he would cover the top with dirt and sand and take a tamping iron, which he carried with him. A big piece of steel looked like a javelin and used it to tamp down the sand and dirt, so that later they could set the fuse and cause the explosions. Well, one day something didn't work. Nobody's exactly sure why. Maybe he just forgot to put in the sand and the dirt, but regardless, he put the tamping iron into the hole, the powder exploded. The tamping iron shot away from his hand and went into his face. It entered the left side of Gage's jaw. Moving in an upward direction, it passed behind the left eye through the left side of the brain and it went out the top of his skull and went several feet away of clutter. Now, marvelously, Cage wasn't killed on spot. He lost consciousness for a little bit, but then uh, he staggered to his feet. And in some regards, Gage was very lucky. So he underwent a series of operations, he had infections, he got sick, at times his life was at risk. But months later he was in certain regards pretty much recovered. He was able to see, he wasn't deaf, he wasn't paralyzed, he didn't lose the ability to speak or understand language. He didn't lose the intellectual capacities in any simple way. But in another sense, Gage was very unlucky, because the Gage has been transformed by this incident. Someone who knew Gage describes that information like this. Before the S accident, Gage was quote the most efficient and capable man, a man of temperate habits. A considerable energy of character, a sharp, shrewd businessman. After the accident, Gage was no longer Gage. He was uh, fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity, manifesting but little difference for his fellows. He ended up uh, losing his job. He traveled through the states, taking up different jobs engaging in different relationships and ultimately ended up in an exhibit in a traveling circus holding a tamping iron and telling people about this terrible story about how it went through his head and went through his brain and changed his life so why am i telling you this story well, as I said, I want to begin the course by talking about the brain. And the story of Penis Gage illustrates something which we have abundant reason to believe, which is that the brain is the source of mental life. And uh, so the match the brain can have profound effects on who we are and what we are. An idea here is nicely summarized by the Nobel Prize winning biologist Francis Crick. He calls it astonishing hypothesis. As he writes, the astonishing hypothesis is that you, your joys and your sorrows, your memories and your ambitions, your sense of personal 
identity and free will are in fact no more than the behavior of the West assembly or nerve cells and their associate molecules. Now this assembly of nerve cells is of course the brain, the brain and parts of the spinal cord, uh, but we are going to talk about the brain here. And the idea then as sometimes people like to put in the mind is the brain or that the mind is what the brain does or the mental life emerges for the brain. The official term for this is materialism, that we are material begins. Everybody accept that our arms and legs and our heart and kidneys are made of the same sort of stuff and as rabbits and automobiles and cups. But the idea is that our, our mental life what makes us special, special our most intimate feelings and thoughts also arise from those material things and this the idea that makes possible the discipline of neuroscience and much of psychology